She weeps for the ones never woken, from the sleep of words never spoken. Wednesday night ghosts who never face stage, who hide behind pens, seated at tables in cafes and prop nights, in attempts at making sense of the ethereal chaos in their minds. Their imaginations tango and salsa, dancing with their realities, words in this choreography spill ink onto pages never facing light. They come and support us, these spirits of concrete thought and rhythmic notions who have potential to move emotion of others to surface on these Wednesday nights. They sit in their insecurities encouraged to face stage, this very stage, where ghost poets who have found strength in their voice, these forces of light, these ghosts that remind us, if only for tonight, if only for this moment, that you are alive. And I sit amongst you an audience. I am lost soul, transparent, hiding in the shadows, immersed in memories that require eulogies to be written. Like Rudy Francisco, I find dust along my own fault lines and ramblings of lyricism that experience criticism of the most brutal kind, my very own. I have found myself among the brethren of Wednesday night ghosts who have not yet found their resolve in words that never shared. I continue to search for my own. They ring loud in my head and on paper, finally to descend to larynx, only to be turned ethereal silence when faced the prospect of a stage. I have not faced stages. But this is not stage fright. We are not afraid of this base that grounds us to face audiences, not the one that holds legs up and supports spine in an attempt to stand a little bit taller. Not afraid of the stage lights that shine. These lights provide a warmth I'm not used to. I am not afraid of microphones that carry my voice. I am afraid of voice. That my mask will drop and the facade will fail. That the cracks in my cadence will expose the need to connect to humanity. To fail at making impact with the words choreographed into melody in my mind. I have danced my steps in life to this choreography of transparency and pain. It's the vulnerability and exposing soul that lives in darkness to this light. And I have sat in rooms with my vulnerability, always hyper aware of her gaze. Her presence is overwhelming, and I've never been able to look directly at her. What comes next is always the same conversation. She wants to know why I disconnect and choke on my own silence. My throat raw with explanations I don't even understand anymore. She hands me water knowing I choke on the words I need to say to initiate my own healing. I'm barely audible, but I've cracked. Admitting to her I have spent too many nights making love to avoidance. Waking up in the morning with thoughts screaming, what if I just went for it? I tell my vulnerable I have spent too much time folding my thoughts into paper airplanes, focused on sending messages of love and light under a heaviness of depression. Have been told countless times again, I am nurturer. I am safe space for everyone but myself. Have been told you are shield, but you are not sword. You are listening ear and shoulder to lean on, voice of reason silencing self when I am alone. I have bypassed leaning on the support of microphone stands and the support of ghost poets who spill vulnerability on stage so beautifully in efforts and attempts to extract my own voice. What if I just went for it? Fuck yeah. My vulnerability, she has been neglected and she still sits here, maintaining the distance I've set to protect myself. She's clairvoyant, asking, how's that working out for you? You know, the whole distance thing. <laughs> we laugh in what feels like the first moment of transparency in years. She moves a little bit closer. The distance begins to close. Inspiration turning my own paper airplanes into grenades. Realization that my pen is my sword and my truths are my arsenal of explosives. I have been waiting to detonate truth, to lay internal battles to rest. So tonight, let us begin.